Robert, I'm 22 and I'm from a town or a city in South Wales called Swansea. Today I wanted to talk to you about the possibility in your disability. When I was younger, I didn't really think that being disabled had any perks. I used to think that, of course, being in a wheelchair meant that I was at a disadvantage. And I wanted to talk to you about how I overcame my struggles, both with being disabled and thinking that it was a negative, and also overcoming things like bad mental health days, and kind of realising who I was and my inherent worth. Whiz Kids, I have a lot to thank Whiz Kids for because throughout my whole journey as a wheelchair user and throughout my whole journey as a young girl, Whiz Kids were always kind of there in the background, cheering me on, kind of like an invisible friend that always had my back. Whiz Kids first came to the rescue for me when I was seven years old. My school, uh, my secondary school, they actually fundraised for me to get um, a specialised trike. I have a condition called cerebral palsy, which means that I cannot ride um, a normal bike. So my primary school bundled together and with the help of WizKids, they were able to fund for me um, to buy this special trike. And I remember it so vividly and so fondly. Um, it was red and blue and it was really cool. And more importantly, it helped me obviously be able to cycle and just feel like everybody else. When I was younger, I had a big chip on my shoulder about wanting to be like everybody else. Um, and growing up, I wanted to take part in the same experiences as my friends who were of a similar age. So when I had this trike, it was like, oh my god, you're learning how to ride your bike, and now I can learn how to ride my trike. So whiz kids were awesome in being able to, um, you know, give me that independence and give me that freedom and give me that sense of belonging just with a piece of equipment. Um, and the way the charity fundraised and the way that the charity just gave me a sense of equality uh, is something that I will never ever forget. Yes, okay, I had my trike and all right, I'm not Bradley Wiggins and I never will be, but to be involved and to be included um, in the situation and in a life experience, I know it's only something small, but WizKids gave me the ability both to ride a bike and to feel like I had ability, but also to feel like I was normal. Um, I'm not so bothered about being normal nowadays, but I've really got to thank WizKids uh, because from that first instance of, you know, helping my school fundraise for me to get a trike, they kind of said to me, yes, okay, Emily, you're in a wheelchair, but that doesn't mean you can't have a bike. Then, as I grew up, I started to come to terms with the fact that I had cerebral palsy and the fact that I was in a wheelchair. And I won't lie to you, I had a very turbulent time with knowing I was disabled, but also feeling at a disadvantage. I haven't always been this comfortable. If you'd have told 13 year old me that I'd be sitting in front of a camera, talking on behalf of WizKids and trying to encourage young people to see the ability in their disability, she would have turned around and said, oh yeah, right Emily, you'll never do anything. Um, and I think WizKids were really instrumental for me in both normalizing being in a wheelchair, but also putting a positive spin on having a disability or being a wheelchair user. Um, the way this came about was, when I was a teenager, I was made aware of local WizKids clubs, um, and these came in many forms. So you had things like wheelchair skills training, which I remember, because when I was younger, I had an attitude. I was like any normal teenager. Sometimes I used to push myself into walls, push myself into people, you know. I had a bit of a rage, um, but yeah. Whiz kids were amazing. I remember the wheelchair skills training where they kind of sat me down and said, you know, Emily, you want to be more independent, you want to be more pause, you know, you want to be more able uh, to push your wheelchair. We can help you. We can make sure that you can navigate your wheelchair and we can give you tips and tricks on getting up and down ramps. And I have so many fond memories about whiz kids and it's just like, I don't know what I would have done without them genuine. Um, but yeah, the wheelchair skills training was awesome. 
and it kind of, again, it gave me a freedom in my wheelchair, you know, like, all right, it's only going around a couple of cones to some people. But to me, it was like, wow, you know, there are people out there and there are these amazing clubs run by whiz kids that are trying to help me live my life. And, you know, they're trying to further my potential as a person in a wheelchair who has an amazing ability to live. Um, so yeah, wheelchair skills training was awesome. Uh, the wheelchair, uh, the Whiz Kids Clubs, the Whiz Kids Clubs, they just make you feel like everybody else. It was so amazing to me when I went to the social events. There are so many events that Whiz Kids put on for young people, obviously pre-COVID. Um, you know, it would be things like we'd have, um, you know, a film night once a month where we just come together, me and, you know, other people in the group, and we'd chat about things and we'd maybe, you know, talk about our disability and how we felt about it. And it was just a, a really safe space. You know, sometimes we did more active things, you know, activity weeks, things like that. With whiz kids, there was nothing that we couldn't do. So we were always, you know, we were always encouraged to reach for the stars. And we were kind of asked, you know, what do you want in a club? It was never, oh, you're disabled, so you've just got to sit there and talk. It was always anything you need help with, guys. What can we encourage you about? Do you want to do this? You know, everything was accessible. If we wanted to go kayaking or if we wanted to do something crazy, like, I don't know, um, you know, go swimming or something. It was always, it was always accessible. It was never a no. It was always a, all right, we can do it, but we'll do it differently. And that really helped me personally. The whiz kids mantra of yes okay you're in a wheelchair but you're gonna be amazing and you're an amazing person and you're gonna live an amazing life and you know you're gonna you're gonna you've got so much potential that really spurred me on personally to kind of sit back and think wow you know if there are so many people around me both my age and you know the helpers who are saying to me come on Emily you can do this we can do this you know why can't I believe in myself and whiz kids in essence, Whiskers helped me believe in myself in so many instances. Um, and it was so funny going to the clubs every month and kind of looking around the room and being like, there's more people in wheelchairs in this room than not, you know? <laughs> it's like the carers and the helpers who were able-bodied, they were the old ones out. Um, so yeah, it was just crazy to feel normal. Whiskers allowed me to see myself as a dis uh, no, to see myself as disabled, but not to see that as a negative, you know, thing. And also, you know, being in a room with so many other people who have a disability, you don't feel like the minority. You know, it was crazy to be like, whoa, I'm the majority. Yeah? Like, what the frick? Um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk to anybody watching and thank whiz kids because another thing that really helped me get to where i am today you know even speaking about whiz kids i think it's important to mention that i haven't always been this way like i said earlier you know i didn't oh well, not that i didn't like i used to hate um being disabled and i used to hate the fact that i was a young girl in a wheelchair I used to cry and I used to, you know, I used to wake up in the morning, look in the mirror, look down and think, why me? Why am I trapped in this cage? You know, I'm stuck in this wheelchair. I'm never going to be anybody. I'm never going to achieve anything. And I think it's really important for me to say that if you are going through that now and if you feel like your disability is a hindrance, trust me, it's not. Your disability is what makes you you. Everybody has bad days. And yes, okay, you may not be able to see the positive aspects of your disability right now. But trust me, the fact that you are even here, the fact that you are even a human being on this planet shows how special you are. And I know that's cliche. And I know you may be like, yeah, whatever, Emily. You don't know me. But trust me, your disability should not be seen as a negative. You know, you shouldn't want to be ordinary. You, you're you already extraordinary. You are special and you are crazy amazing. For me, I had bad mental health days when I was just trying to... um, I was just trying to compare myself to everybody else. I would look at able-bodied people and I would think, well, I can't do that. I can't run. I can't jump. I can't skip. 
you know, I'm never going to be able to do that. But I was forgetting what I could do. I was so focused on my disability that my ability just went out the window and it was like, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I remember my mum saying to me, yeah, all right, maybe you can't do this, but what can you do? You know, we can all sit here and say, I can't. You know, my mum said to me, for example, I can't be a ballerina, but you don't see me focusing on that. I focus on what I can do. And if there is anybody who's, you know, going through, you know, they, they're trying to figure out who they are and their mental health is up and down, I just want to tell you, it's normal. It's normal. My mental health when I was a kid, it was like a roller coaster. My poor parents, they didn't know whether I was coming or going, been or gone. And that's okay. Because you're not expected to know the answers to everything all of the time. When you grow up, you learn about yourself. I'm 23 and I still learn about myself. I still do things and think, oh, maybe that was a mistake. But my mum always says, nothing in life is ever a mistake. If you can learn from an experience, then that's positive because that means you're growing as a person. And at the moment, you may be sitting there watching this thinking, I don't like my disability. I don't like myself. I don't feel as though I'm any value. And I'm just telling you, you are valuable. You are valuable because you are you. And you will see in a couple of years, like I did, that although this is cliche and everybody watching is going to be like, ah, oh, no, everything happens for a reason. If I wasn't in this wheelchair, I would not be speaking to you now. I would not be working for WizKids. I would not have met the amazing people I have met. I would not have been able to cultivate qualities in my life. You know, things like bravery, strength, empathy. I would just be average. I'm sorry to people walking, you know, watching that can walk. But this is our normal. And I want to make you aware that yes, you may be a wheelchair user, but that's quite normal. Don't look at people who can walk and think that they are the be all and end all, because what is it really? It's just walking. My wheelchair is like a fancy pair of legs. That's all it is. It's just a special pair of legs that looks different than the average. Just be careful that you don't define yourself by your disability and with your wheelchair. Your wheelchair is an expression of you and it's like an accessory. You put it on, you know, when you get in your wheelchair, you put your wheelchair on, it's your accessory and it helps you live. But it's not all that you are. It's just a way that you can express who you are. You know, my wheelchair is really powerful. Without my wheelchair, I couldn't even live my life. I'm grateful to even be in a wheelchair because it makes sure that I can get from A to B and that I can have things like a job and drive a car and live my life properly. I think spinning things positively and looking at things in a different light is really hard when you feel negative. And if you do have those negative days, weeks, months, years, God, it took me years to be comfortable with who I am. I never thought that I'd be able to speak you know about my disability and see it as a positive and that's okay all i would say to you is don't be so hard on yourself and don't work to these imaginary time scales it doesn't matter when you achieve what you achieve the achievement itself is important and somebody else's achievement should not define your own you know if i think that picking something off the up off the floor is amazing who's to tell me it's not you know, if you turn around to me and say, Emily, all I want to achieve in life is I want to be able to do a wheelie. Go you! I think that's amazing. You know, don't, don't watch films and TV and see these billionaires living in these mansions and think, oh, well, I haven't achieved anything in my life. No, no. We are all individual and our achievements, it doesn't matter how big they are, an achievement is an achievement. You know, if I cook a pot noodle compared to whether I cook a three course meal, I still cooked something. <laughs> if my parents are watching this, they're gonna be like, yeah, we wish you would cook, but still, just remember your achievements are important because they're yours. Don't worry about other people. We're all living our lives and we're all on separate paths. But as long as you know, 
that you're amazing and you can put anything, you can do anything you put your mind to, then that's all you really need to know. There are so many people like me <laughs> and like WizKids as a charity who all they want to do is help. They are like little heroes. They are like teens of heroes. It's like, right, we're a superhero clan and they're all just behind you waiting to give you this little key to unlock your potential. And without WizKids, I don't think I'd be who I am today. And I'm not just saying that because I'm on video, but WizKids really want to show you your ability and I don't think that I would know of my ability if I didn't have those people behind me, you know, giving me a bike or, you know, allowing me to know what it's like to bake a cake in an adapted kitchen, for example. If I didn't have those champions of WizKids, I really don't think that I would champion myself as much as I do, as much as I do now. <laughs> I just want you to know that if you're feeling down or if you're feeling sad, that's okay. Just don't feel sad and down about things you can't control because that's a, that's, you know, that's a meaningless exercise and it's just gonna make you feel worse. Instead of looking at your disability or looking at your wheelchair in a negative light, you know, look at the fact that you're an awesome person who has a disability, but also is able to, <clears throat> excuse me, but also is able to do so much. When I started looking on the positive and when I started wanting to be who I am, I think that's a huge thing. Self-acceptance for me was such a huge roller coaster. God, it took so long. I went from being Emily, the girl who wanted to be anything bar disabled, to now, if someone said to me, Emily, you know, if we took your wheelchair away and, you know, would you want to walk? No, I wouldn't want to walk. Why, why would I want to walk? If I could walk, I'd be like everyone else. And, you know, being in a wheelchair is my normal. It would just be so alien. All I would say to you is allow yourself to experience life and allow yourself to enjoy your life. Just because you're wheelchair bound or just because you're disabled, that does not mean you are less. You are worthy of happiness and you are worthy of success, whatever that success may mean. Just allow yourself to be who you are. God, I try to be anything but Emily in the wheelchair. I dyed my hair, I went really thin, I went really fat, I <laughs> changed my style up loads of times just so I'd be called Emily the girl with the dyed hair, Emily the girl who dresses weird, Emily the girl who's skinny, Emily the fat girl. I wanted to be anything but Emily the girl in the wheelchair. And it was really strange for me as I grew up to an adult to kind of realise, do you know what, Emily? You had the biggest problem with being disabled than anyone else. You were sitting there in the corner worried, thinking, oh, everybody's going to hate me because I'm disabled. And nobody ever did. They liked you because you were Emily. You know, you were just Emily. You noticed the wheelchair and you had a big chip on your on your shoulder about being disabled, but nobody else really cared. Um, and I think it's important to notice that people like you and love you as an individual. I don't think it would matter if I was pink, green, blue. People, you know, they, they love you and they just want you to love yourself back. So if there's anybody watching this who is maybe having a wobble with their worries or doesn't really know where they're going in life, don't worry because it's quite normal. It's normal to have off days because let's be fair, right? if we didn't have off days, we'd be robots and nobody wants you know, a world of robots. Feelings and emotions are fluid. It's just important that you know how to override them and how to make yourself feel good. Because you deserve to feel good. If you have a bad day, what I used to do was get my favourite snacks, get my favourite food, put my favourite film on and just allow myself to feel sad. Because nine times out of ten, you'll get up in the morning and think, oh, I had a bit of a bad day yesterday, I'm going to make sure that today is better. You are allowed to feel sad, but you are also worthy of happiness. That is my main message. You are so strong and you are so brave. And I know you have been through things 
that other people probably wouldn't have been able to have even gone through. So I want anybody watching this, number one, to know they are worthy. Your self-worth is defined by you. Doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, what you look like, I'm telling you right now, you are worthy. You are worthy and you are amazing. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. <laughs> You're amazing. And you are going to do so much good and so many crazy amazing things. Just accept yourself. Because being in a wheelchair and having a disability, it's not that bad, is it? I think it'd be worse if you were like a villain or a monster. Or like, It's just a part of you. It's just something to add to your already, already amazing description. What colour hair have you got? What eye, what eye colour? What's your favourite movie? You know, what's your favourite colour? Oh, and by the way, I'm in a wheelchair. That's all it is. And when you look at it like that, it's not that big of a deal. I understand there may be people out there right now who hate themselves. Because trust me, I hated myself. For so many years, I absolutely hated myself. And I did everything I could. I hid in my house. I didn't want to go out because I convinced myself, oh, no one's going to want to be friends with a disabled girl. No one's going to want to know me. Again, I had the biggest problem, not other people. So I think I just want to tell you to start believing in yourself because people like WizKids and your friends and your family and your guardians, they all believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> I believe in you and I don't even know you, but I know that you're crazy amazing. So, yeah, <laughs> that's my message. Be who you are because you are enough. So, <laughs> To end this video, I just want to say it one more time. You are crazy amazing and I want to give a big thank you to his kids because never did I ever think, age 23, 10 years ago when I was 13, I thought that I was going to be nothing. I thought that I would never achieve anything in my life. And now look at me. I've gone from being a WizKids ambassador to helping out in the clubs, to now working for them on social media. It's crazy. But yes, a big thank you to WizKids for allowing me to believe in my abilities and enabling me to do so much, regardless of my wheelchair and regardless of my disability. I don't know where I'd be without them, <laughs> honestly. And I'm not just saying that on the record. But yes. Thank you for listening. <laughs>